James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. This is the pre inaugural 2017 show, the pre president, U.S. presidential inaugural uh, show. Heaven help us all. Um, I call it the Doomsday Inaugural. We already have a Doomsday cabinet selected. Oh, yeah. So, 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 here we are. I don't have to tell you any details about the show because you already read it in the intro. So why be redundant? Yes, it is snowing today in uh, northeastern New Jersey. How many inches do, do they anticipate? Well, they say two to three for us, but All right. who the hell knows? Well, I, I don't use a car brush. I use a kitchen broom. And the older kitchen broom. It's quicker. Watch your windshield wipers. I'm gentle around them. Okay. All right. But it, it's a lot faster mm -hmm. for pushing and brushing. Uh, pushing the snow off. But anyway, so my lower back feels better. It just uh, it just went out of whack for no logical reason. I was sitting in a car. I went. I went. I attempted to get out of the car, oh. and it went on me. Uh, it, it, it feels uh, the pain and st and spasming goes away when I lie down or stand. But if I sit in a in a uh, more of a jackknife position, ah, like I'm feeling now. Uh. Unless I I have a cushion behind me. It depends on how I'm sitting, and it comes back. I never get hurt or feel discomfort or pain while exercising. Now, of course, I haven't been exercising in several days because of this. Uh, it's like a sciatic, but sciatic is more excruciating. But um, it goes down the leg. Yeah, it goes down your leg. Is right. So it's bad. But anyway, getting back to this, it looks like Donald Trump has come to the realization that Mexico is not going to pay for this stupid wall. He says it is. He says it he is. Says they'll pay us back after we build it. Uh, chances are, my predictions, my my intuition uh, says that the middle class will get screwed uh, into paying for this ridiculous wall. Hold on. Of course, the middle class will get will get uh, uh, stuck with the bill because the rich never get stuck with the bill in the United States. You think his rich buddies and, and him and Trump is going to pay for for any anything unnecessary that won't work? Like this wall? Uh, no, the middle class will get stiff, as always. Um, so, you know, I, I, to rehash our past few shows, um, Donald Trump's victory speech and campaign promises are totally the opposite of his cabinet selections. Uh -huh. Totally the opposite. So don't hold your breath for um, Make America Great Again. Maybe maybe the, there's a disclaimer in, in microscopic uh, words that says, for the wealthy. Make America sick again. Well, they're already rich. But you know, for some reason, the top 1%, the wealthiest people on earth, always seem to be these greedy old geezers with one foot on a banana peel and one foot in a grave, and they still don't have enough money. Okay. Amazing. Simply amazing. They all have the one thing in common. They don't have enough. I, wanna, uh, I just want to show you uh, some of the coupons that come in. I get an envelope with coupons, you know, some of them from pizzerias, some of them hey. are from restaurants, buffets, Chinese takeouts, uh, uh, um, people who do roofing, people who do tiles, you know. But I get a couple of these. Donate your car to uh, for our veterans. You know, our poor or homeless 
uh, veterans that are down and out, donate your car. Look, it's a fundraiser. Well, let me tell you something. The government should be taking care of our veterans, not not having these poor people that put their bodies and lives on the line for war profiteering, racketeers, you know, they should be taken care of by our system, not by relying on donations, okay, after they, after they, what they've been through and when they return to the United States, when they return home, they should not have to rely on fundraisers which most likely have a president or CEO sucking up most of the fundraising money, all right? Uh, our system is despicable. They should be taking care of our vets, all right? Donate your car, my ass. I mean, anything, any money they could raise, as long as they're giving most of it to the vets, I'm all for. But people in, in a country like this, people that are poor, whether they be veterans or not, should not be in that homeless situation in this type of country. You know what I mean? Not with the, the uh, unfair re, uh, distribution of wealth that occurs. Well, hey, if we give it to the vets, we can't give it to the military, we can't give it to the, uh, 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 the, 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 the corporations and the rich for uh, tax cuts and etc. It's like, all a matter of uh, distribution. Are you talking about the bogus job creators? Yeah. Trick. I. 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 I look. I. Do, I posted so many times. Trickle down economics is a right wing lie. That's it. Period. The money. Even if all the jobs were in the United States, even if they were, hmm. the money will pool at the top. And that's what it's meant to do. It's not, you know what it's like? It's having a big wine glass, and, and right before the wine overflows, they just replace it with a larger wine glass, <laughs> and then a larger wine glass. So, so nothing trickles or drips downward. All right. Lucky seven bells for our show. We need all the luck we can get this January beginning of January. Uh, I guess the inauguration is uh, Monday, right? Friday, 20th. Oh, it's 20th. the 20th. Oh, it's the 20th. Oh, it's the 20th. Okay. Right. Mr. Obama is going to give his last speech, I believe this week, on Tuesday. It would have been nice if his last project was to uh, get a real liberal Supreme Court justice in there. But, uh, but old well, he's not got a liberal one in there, but he's got a decent one in there, but they're blocking him. But old the turtle. same as they've been doing all for his eight years. But the extremely arrogant and spiteful, turtle-headed, puffy, turkey-necked uh, bitch McConnell made a statement that uh, something to the effect that uh, the, the Republican Congress's mission is to do the opposite of what the American people want. Something well, like they've been doing a good job at that. Well, they've always done that. Yeah. They've always, they want to steal your Social Security and Medicare that doesn't belong to them. But, the, but the, this is the thing. Everything they do, the Republicans, is anti-poor and anti-middle class. So why on earth do you stupid, imbecilic, inbred, redneck, evangelical, zealot, religious freak, stupid, asshole, redneck, pe I already said that, right? Pieces of shit keep on re-electing re these incumbents. Electing and re-electing them. They, 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 they looked at the uh, four counties in Kentucky or on Obamacare and etc. and voted for Trump. So they said, "Don't touch my Obamacare. Don't touch my Obamacare. Don't touch my social services." But yeah. we're going to vote Republican. There you go. Very interesting. That is a very interesting point, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Well, Let us contemplate a little bit on that. You 
falling asleep. <laughs> Let us contemplate. Uh, we should contemplate contemplation, actually. No, I mean, it's like, um, it doesn't make sense. That's correct. As old man uh, Leonard Nimoy used to say, it is very illogical. Illogical. You are, you know that the left wing, the progressives, are responsible for your social services mm -hmm. in its entirety, mm -hmm. including the invention of social security. Mm -hmm. All right. Whatever food stamps you get. Obamacare, it's all coming from, from the left, from progressives. But you consistently vote right wing. Yeah. Now, let us analyze this. You think you think it's because of their stupid evangelical cult, maybe? It's in, 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 in a lot of instances because they don't understand what I just said before. They'll vote for Trump, but they'll say, don't touch my Obamacare. But, but that's like... It's the opposite, it's, <laughs> you know, party that gave them Obama. Yeah, that's what I get. Yeah, I, 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 I just echoed. So some of them don't know. When you, if you go and make it, they've done a study. I'm trying they, to understand they, it. They go on, there is no understanding of it. They did do studies. They go and they are in the street and they ask people, do you like the Affordable Care Act? And most people like it. Because it sounds When they say, do you good. like Obamacare? They say no. Cause, cause the word it's the same thing. Because the word Obama is in there. Exactly. Because them dark people uh, associate Obama with the black man in the White House. That's correct. So if you're talking to a uh, somebody from down south, they're, they're, instinctively they're going to go, Obamacare, I don't want nothing that guy. Rah, rah, rah. Same thing with Medicare and Medicaid because you know, they're on it. And everything, and they'll 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 say, "Don't touch my Medicare." But the goddamn Republicans are going to do that. Well, they're going to. Um, they're not going to borrow it. They're going to steal it. They're going to destroy it. It's it's even though you paid into it, they want. Look, these people. What they really want. These people are 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 rich. These uh, Republican senators and congressmen and uh, right-wing Supreme Court justices, they're pretty financially independent. So they have theirs. Now, obviously, in a sociopathic way, they don't care what you don't have. They don't care what happens to you and your children. Uh, now, they they take bribes. They get paid off. They are, they are whores for the corporation. So they, they're not... They're not feeling any remorse by stealing your social security. No, and they keep raising their uh, 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 income, don't they? Hey, even if they weren't wealthy, 175000 a year, not counting perks, I think you can pay for your own re individual retirement account, your own health insurance. Mm -hmm. Listen, if my brother-in-law has to pay $500 a month as a business owner, uh, for a moderate, moderate, not the worst, not the best, a moderate, decent health insurance. I'm sure that these people in Washington can afford they can. A, a, a upper tier health insurance and an individual retirement account, nest egg, they can put money away. Come on, 175,000. Why count. should they care about that if you, you as the government, are going to pay it for them? Because See? we, the people, do not hold anyone's uh, feet to the fire. fire. Nobody is held accountable for anything. It's like the more infamous you are, the more you succeed in today's America. Well, as Republicans, they win again. Once they lose, as a, as a crook or a ethics uh, person. Look at Newt Gingrich, for Christ's sake. North, uh, Oliver North. Poindexter. Hey, hey, you can we, go on and on and on. Hey, we got a, we have a Jeff Sessions, who's going to be Secretary of State. He's a racist. Yeah. yeah look He's at, a goddamn racist. 
Yeah, and you're, what did he put in charge of uh, the environment? Some Exxon Mobil? Ex, Exxon Mobil? Yeah, wait a minute. It's, it's Till, Tillerson's going to be Secretary of State. Sessions is going to be the. Oh, yeah, the Attorney General. The whole cabinet is pro corporate right wing. That's correct. And he's supposed to make America great yeah. again, yeah. but not for the poor middle class. And it's not going to happen. Hey, we already have a first. We're going. We're going to have a first lady that has lots of nude photographs that anybody could look at. You know, normally the first lady would be wearing like um, like a um, a navy blue business suit with white pearls. You know, very formal looking, hair up. You know, pinned up and pinned back or whatever. Not this one. So you know, none of that stuff hurt anybody this time around. Times have changed. Billy Billy Bush on the bus didn't hurt him at all, and that stuff would hurt. Didn't hurt uh, him at all. None of it hurt him. Everything he did was against what should have been done. But but people and it never hurt. Him. But but people was were captivated by his speeches at the rallies. He really, he he tapped into. Ah, excuse me. When I cross my legs, something it tends to feel better. My back. Uh, he tapped into inner feelings of these people at the rallies that really, they really scratched them where they itched. Donald Trump. Yeah. They, re they really dug what he was saying, he really and he probably knew it too. He gave them the idea that he was an outsider and he was going to change things. Same thing Obama did. But they liked his aggressiveness towards, yeah. you know, them people. Them, those people. Them people. It's always it's doing. always pointing the blame towards people that do not deserve the blame because they are not to blame. Look at over there. Look at over there. Big distraction. By the way, speaking of uh, SNAP and uh, things like that, they're looking into food stamp EBT being able to buy from like Fresh Direct, which is a, like a grocery store where you can buy stuff and it's delivered to you online. You so, can order online your that, food. Isn't that pricey? Going, isn't that company kind of pricey? I have no idea about it. Oh, Fresh it. Direct, is that? I have I no idea. I noticed a company, this, Blue Apron. Blue Apron, Luvo, there's a whole bunch of them. But the point I'm trying to make is that they are trying to make it so you Privatize. can buy online. They so you don't have to go to the brick and mortar store. Well, uh, buying online. Go for that. Buying online every year is growing, growing by leaps and, and bounds. Yes, yes. Buying online is gradually taking the place of stores. Yes. Uh, I'm sure uh, DHL, FedEx, and UPS, and uh, and um, uh, oh, Amazon is the other one. And Fresh the, Direct and Amazon. And the Postal Service. And I bet all the parcel delivery companies They're are, love it. are ecstatically... They're going to love it? Are ecstatically, hysterically, hysterically... No, that's not the right word. Ecstatically happy. But happier than a pig and shit. That, that purchasing is going from the, the, the retail store to online mm -hmm. buying. Probably the people who who make uh, dry ice and, and ice packs, and I bet they're happy too. They will be, yeah, they will be helping. Yep. You know what I mean? Things of that nature. But in other words, things will change, and it will be easier for uh, the people on Snap. Yeah, and That's this is I'm not th uh, these meals because my mother gets food delivered. Uh, she gets uh, and. I forget what it was. One or two. She gets uh, two weeks worth of uh, grub, of vittles. Ah, frozen stuff. No, actually, no. Well, on you can't contra... eat two weeks of food in one day. Uh, on the contrary, it comes delivered 
it comes delivered uh, refrigerated but not frozen it comes delivered fresh and then I in turn fro it. freeze it after I rotate the stock oh. I'm not stupid I put I take put the older meals in the but front you, but you in the freezer, and I put yeah. the newer meals in the back yeah. but what I'm saying is they're not it's not like Swanson hungry man dinners or or encore Marie calendar they're 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 pr decently prepared meals that you would get in a good cafeteria and they're, they're good f it, yeah it, they're they're decent food okay. it's decent food you get a menu you yeah. choose from the menu it yeah. just so happens that her health insurance uh company we uh well care i think it's called pays for it a hundred percent for my mom but there are other companies now doing it. Now between that, between Amazon and eBay and uh, the Google Shopping and this company and that company, everything is becoming online shopping and companies are offering, ver uh, uh, offering free shipping and handling. Mm. A lot of companies are offering free shipping and handling as well as the lowest price you can find, which means Forget about mom and pop retail stores. They'll, they're going to be a dinosaur of the past because you're not going to save any money at a mom and pop retail store. Their prices are through the roof. But then again, their, lease, their leasing costs to have a store are probably through the roof. Their right. rent is probably through, through the roof. Yeah. So, you know, forget about them. Now you got the corporate chains. They are encouraging online shopping, mm -hmm. and as a rule, the first products that get shipped out by truck are the online purchases first, and then the stores secondarily get the stock. I must say, I deal with a company called Chewy yes. for my cat food and things okay. of that nature. Pet food for the cats, right. And lately, Chewy has been delivering next day. It's incredible. Absolutely, they, they must have a, a warehouse not too far in, in the northeast somewhere. I have no idea. That's another thing. These companies have more than one warehouse. So if the company is based, like for instance, if it's next door, I order from a company to save money. I order from Swanson Vitamins. They're in Fargo, North Dakota. Ooh. But the warehouse that my order comes out of is in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I'm in New Jersey. That's why I get it uh, in a timely fashion. Hmm. Okay. And uh, this is what is going on with these companies. They have multiple warehouses in different regions. You don't have to wait that long for your product. And the shipping costs are lower and lower. Yeah. And uh, in a lot of cases, they're free. If you have a certain minimum order, they're free. And, uh, and this is... Uh, Every, listen, everything possible that they can come up with is going through the, per, the personal computer, tablet, or laptop. All through the computer. Someday soon, I know they have the technology already. You don't even need a password. They, they have something that can read the iris of your eye right through the monitor, which is second to DNA. Because you got to be careful who you're dealing with nowadays. You know what? You can't fake DNA, though. The iris is almost as good as DNA. You know what I mean? Because everybody's guilty nowadays mm. until proven innocent. Everybody's. Hey, there's a lot of scamming out there. Oh. And they're slick. They're very slick. Oh. They're very slick. Now, I don't know how true this is. But a former classmate of mine sent me this information that the um, the blood-sucking, uh, greedy, uh, big-nosed geek Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook uh -huh. wants to start charging people for their posts. Certain people. Certain. Not everybody. That's what the hell the uh, goddamn program is all about. Well, he makes money. Why would he charge you? He makes money off his ads, doesn't he? Yes. And all the spamming that you get hit with, all the ads. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, well, he doesn't have enough money. Now, I don't know how true that is. A, a friend of mine says, no. Nah. 
No. This would be all over the news if this was true. Nobody would make a post. Nobody would. <laughs> hey, you know what people people concurred with me? I go to Twitter. I hang out. I, I would I would say, you know what? I have two Facebook pages. I have five Facebook groups. You think I'm going to pay you yeah. for my uploads and my posts? Uh -huh. It'll be a cold day in hell before I give you a red cent, Zuckerberg. I go to Twitter and say, and just and just sacrifice the Facebook before I pay him anything. Oh, sure. I know when I upload uh, something on my page, he he nags me to pay five dollars to boost my uh, visibility of oh, my yeah. post. That, yeah, that's yeah, cool. right. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna pay. No, I ignore it. But it, it, you know, it, it it pops up in front of you. You know, like one of those annoying pop-ups, yeah. and you, you got to kind of finagle, you know, to get rid of it. It's hard to get rid of. Yeah. You know, they're getting more um, obnoxious sales in the United States, uh, more high pressure. So, but there's no way. If, when he bills me, I, I'll say, you know what? Uh, terminate my uh, my account. I, I I'm not paying you one penny. One penny to that guy. So anyway, I'm just going to show you when we take a break, you'll see the message I got. Maybe it's true. If it is, bye bye Facebook. Maybe it's a, a bullshit, you know. Um, I don't know. I don't know, but I'll post it anyway. I just want to say greetings to my top administrator from Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, Mr. Sash Boyle, and this week, this show, this very show, when we go on break, you will be hearing the debut of the se uh, the sensible sage, Sash Boyle, from San Francisco, California. He will be he will be making his debut with his very first video for our show, Progressive Discussions. You will hear Sash Boyle. So move over, Debbie of the, the same progressives. Move over, chubby, no neck, sank euchre of, of, of the young toiks. And that little uh, uh, chatterbox uh, Yorkshire Terrier, that, that, the, that, that girl that, that hangs out with you. Yeah, oh, that Debbie is so melodramatic. Oh, she's too much, man. And you know what? Debbie from Same Progressives is like Jill Stein. She only seems to reply to women. She must be one of them dar feminists. She doesn't reply to men. Or me. But anyway. Maybe she only has a female outlook. Focus. Yeah, but you know what? It, it's like, it's like, um, brown. You can be in a, um, uh, not an organization, in a, uh, in a, in, in a field, a profession. Yeah. And uh, in that profession, like working in a company, you can have uh, co-workers, you can have uh, ambassadors that are very good at what they do and are very knowledgeable. But that doesn't mean you have to get along with, that doesn't mean you have to be friends, you know, uh, uh, in, in, or you have to like each other. You can even hate one another. Really? I mean, but you can still function together as ambassadors to the profession. Hey, look at Hollywood. I, I read a whole list of over 30 uh, 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 couples, I mean, um, 30 um, actors, actors and actresses that hated their their co-star in a movie or in a TV show. As <laughs> soon as the camera's off, they didn't really talk to each other, but but they work together. Yeah. So you can you can hate you can uh, not like one another, but you, you you can you can still respect each other as an ambassador to the field. Now, the field of a, a natural health. Holistic health and nutrition and and, and 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 physical fitness, exercise. There are lots of um, quirky, uh, eccentric people. There are there are lots of egomaniacs. 
I mean, uh, I bucked heads with Gary No before, but he is a very valuable ambassador and he is outstanding at what he does. But he has certain personality uh, quirks, and you know, uh, when the camera's off or the microphone is shut off. You know, there are some people I literally want to punch out. Ooh. But I respect them for being great ambassadors to the field, to the profession. And, I, and we all need a team. We need these ambassadors. We need a Debbie of same progressives. We need a Michael Moore, even though I'm not sure if he can be supporter of Hillary or not. Some say he it's a lie, some whatever. Or Sank. He did. He did support Hillary? Yeah. Why did why did Sash the Sash says no, don't believe it. Wait a minute, you know what? I'm I'm gonna make a statement. I'm really, I really, anybody who supports Hillary Clinton or or might be a closet neoliberal, I want to crack them right on the head with this black thorn shillelagh. What I don't like are sneaky people. Either you're neoliberal and you're, you're you want to munch on uh, uh, Hillary's chocha, coochie, or you're a true progressive and you are for Jill Stein, Bernie Sanders, uh, Ralph Nader and those uh, great people, uh, Jesse Ventura, make up your mind, everybody. This is my message across the board. I don't like sneaks. I'm telling you right now. When I say I'll crack you with the shillelagh, believe me, there'll be nothing left of your goddamn skulls. I don't like sneaky people. Now, Michael Moore, either Michael Moore endorsed Hillary Clinton or he didn't. As did Bernie. Bernie, all the Bernie people. capitulated. Well, they, they all had to go. You either had Trump or you had... No, Hillary. Bernie could have brought the legions to Jill Stein. That didn't happen. But it didn't happen. Was right. I 100% ha I happy with Jill Stein? No. I thought her rallies reminded me of Woodstock. Yeah. They were too hipster. I don't know who this vice presidential, this, this, the black guy Baraka was. I didn't like his last name. It sounded too much like Barack Obama. I didn't really know anything about him. America didn't know anything about him. Uh, uh, she had a, she constantly had a saccharine sweet smile as she when the camera was on. Dr. Jill Stein never stopped smiling, and that bothered me. Uh, she was and again she was very hipster. She's very you know everybody was like uh, like uh, like Woodstock if you ever see her rallies. Come on, man, look a little professional. You know, so was I happy about any of the candidates for 2016? I was only happy with Bernie until he just simply gave up the grassroots revolution. Him and Jeff Weaver decided to endorse Hillary Clinton. No third progressive party being created. No independent run and no joining of the Green Party. He just flat out, after the nomination, he said, I endorse Hillary Clinton. That was a huge disappointment to us uh, Bernie bros and Bernie Kretz. But and, that, was, that was basically the only choice if you want to win. Uh, you, she you, was the you, only you, one who could win. You're missing the point. The numbers. Look at the numbers Bernie Sanders had. No, no, they no, would no. have flocked to the you're Green Party. Huh? You're not following me. I, I, I really don't understand what you're after saying. After Bernie lost, right. his only choice for numbers was the Democrat. You know, he got screwed when he lost. You know that, don't you? I, I know that, but I'm trying to explain something to you. I don't understand what you're saying. You know why I don't understand what you're saying? Because his you legions would have his legions would have followed him to the Green Party. Maybe. Of course they would. They love Bernie. It was a chance to take. The Democrats already had the numbers. Oh, so the Green Party's numbers would have had it been made. So here we go. Out of whole cloth. Corporatism, the, the lesser of the two there of you. you. Capitalism, corporatism, uh, blah, 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 blah. Hillary was not for free college education, 
She was not for universal health care, but we have to settle for Clinton because... Well, she was after Bernie and her met. You people and your two-party system, ah, you're just as you bad, you're just as bad as evangelicals and your, and your, you and your Roe versus Wade abortion issue. You people... Two-party system. Problem! You, you people are too into the Democrat, forget about the, the FDR Democrats and the JFK Democrats. That, that that your party is shut to hell. It's gone. Mm -hmm. But you and others, they are recognizing that right now. You and others want to save it. Who? You, Bernie Why do you Sanders, the uh, other other Demo other people want to save the Democratic Party, the DNC. It's the only thing that has the numbers, number one. But that doesn't mean you want to save it. I mean, Ellison would probably make a great VP choice in the Green Party or in the third party. What, what's wrong with a third party? Well, he's running for something in the, uh, in the, the, the Democratic Party. Well, now Schumer wants, is, is, um, is promoting, is uh, endorsing Ellison to head the uh, DNC. That's it. Bernie's got Chuck yeah. Schumer on it on on his on the same page with him, which I'm kind of shocked, but you know. But good, great. I mean, you know. well, Bernie works with the Democrats. Well, the the Chuck Schumer. Well, who else is he going to work with? There you go. He he caucuses with them. Chuck Schumer is the head of the my Senate minority, right? That's correct. Or the Senate Democratic minority Democrats, um, right? Okay, let us now sink our teeth into these readings for this uh, pre-2017 uh, 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 New Year January pre-inaugural show. Because the next show you'll see will be the post-inaugural show. That's correct. Now, the, and the chimpanzees uh, will be in charge. Well, there's also a lot of arguing going on on social media about the Russians. And I watched that entire interview between Sean Hannity and Julian Assange uh -huh. of WikiLeaks when Sean Hannity went to London, England to interview him, and it was great. And, and Julian Assange. I didn't know he was a computer by trade. He's a computer security specialist. Uh -huh. And I listened to him. Julian Assange has got quite a head on his shoulders. And I believe him. And Sean Hannity believes him. And it was really important for someone to go over there and interview Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. So let me, based on the interview, let me salute and dedicate to this week's show to Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. But there are people who I feel are closet Hillary supporters that want to blame the Russians for hacking and, and, and want to side with the CIA and the Obama administration and blame the Russians. Well, not only the CIA, all 17 intelligence agencies say... You believe your government? The Russians. I don't. All right. they're, the they're, they're the people in charge. Listen, if you I'm know, working for a it. company and my CEO is an asshole, you think I'm going to like suddenly like uh, uh, say that I, I like the guy? I mean, you know, it's like, I know they're in charge. Right, so... You have to accept their stuff too, and Julian, and then you got to go look for the truth. When there are two competing, uh, what you call it? Yes, it, they both can't be truth. So the problem is, how do you find out? When you got two big horn horn sheep ramming their heads together, and one is white and the other one is brown. You gotta like, uh, it's pretty hard to take a side. Well, you're not supposed to take a side until you find out what, which one is. And that is where the Problem independent, is. critical 
A free, right. free thinker with an open mind comes in. That's correct. And me and Sash, we had a discussion, and it was a perfect sample on how to discuss and debate like civilized people, uh, how two critical free thinkers would discuss the subject. You got to keep an open mind. All right, go ahead. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Oh. Yes, and it hurts. The writer, paperback writer, asks a great question paperback writer. regarding those who are criticizing President elect Donald Trump. That wall, man. Before he has even taken the oath of office. I hope the wall has lots of LED lights on it. What do they hope to gain by their negativity? Yeah, you know, people today, if you if you hit a raw nerve and you criticize them, and you have uh, a basis for what you say, they always call you a hater, or they call you uh, toxic, negative, negativity. But it's okay for them to bitch you mom. Remember when Gary No pulled that on me? Fair-minded people who love our country and respect the office of President of the United States should give that a good deal of thought. But in fairness, this is also true. Trump deserves exactly the same respect that he gave President Obama. No more, no less. Well, when he went fair to visit... Fair is fair. When he went to visit President Obama, he was very nice to him during a campaign and for five years about the birth certificate <laughs> come on the only time I think he was actually nice to him was uh, when he visited the White House I think but uh, but then again I watched that video with Sheriff Arpaio and the lawyers and all. let me tell you something they have quite it they, ha they have quite a case against Obama Obama's birth certificate. I have to, you know. There is no case whatsoever. No, what the video showed. It proved. Doesn't, do, do, do you not know did and you, listen to what we've said in the last few weeks? But did you see the duplicate? No, no, no. You don't have to look see at that at all. Similarity analysis. You don't have to look at that at all. I've told you. Handwriting. At the same time the man was born in the hospital when the birth certificate was issued. There was a newspaper article of his birth. To back that up? To back it up. A real newspaper article. That is correct. So all these uh, uh, handwriting analysis, forensic, uh, forensic document uh, Garbage. Garbage. from Italy, specialists, and uh, Sheriff Alpio's got all these Garbage. experts. and Garbage. So you, these could take, were, you could take a pile's uh, birth certificate and do the same thing. So, so you think that uh, that these um, people in Arizona are just that relentless? Exactly. To what are you kidding me? The right wing has been relentless since the '90s against Hillary and Billy Boy. Well, well, they got their, white water. Well, they got their the 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 they, the. the, the uh, the, uh, inside the White House with the travel gate, but, et cetera, et cetera. But then they get their way with uh, um, Newt Gingrich uh, uh, poisoning uh, Bill Clinton's mind about getting rid of Glass-Steagall and... Uh, Newt Gingrich? No, we talk about... Well, you are out of it, my pa. No, the, the, I mean... Uh, some Larry Summers. Oh, Larry Summers. Okay. And the other jerk-off. Newt Gingrich was 1994. Oh, okay. 1992, actually, I think. He was in with 96 with the the, the bullshit. Uh, 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 well, very far. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that was My. when when Rush Limbaugh was ecstatically happy that the uh, Republicans took control of uh, That's correct. Congress back then. I remember then, him, yes. him carrying on. and um... Anyway, fair is fair. That's the American way. Have we forgotten Trump's ongoing strident promotion of the birther insult? 
is it really fair to criticize the disgusting behavior of those who criticize Trump when in fact they are following his example? Huh? Paperback writer. Huh? Paperback writer. Well, they're all corporatists. They're all corporatists. Both side, both major parties. Thank you. I'm sorry. They are. Thank you know you. what I mean? I mean, I mean, Bernie. That's why we don't need another one. If if uh, the elections were fair. Bernie will be uh, swear, being sworn in office. Bernie Sanders would be taking the oath um, next uh, week, uh, January 20th. I mean, if the elections were fair and square. Mind you, mind you, there are still many numbskulls, like the Southern blacks and gay people, to have this affinity, this, this, this attraction. How about to, the Southern whites? To Hillary Clinton. To Hillary Clinton, they have this thing for Hillary Clinton. They, they maybe they don't like Bernie because he's a, you know, he's a Jew from Brooklyn, New York. He's a Northerner, and, and you know, and Bill was is, is from Arkansas. That's correct. Maybe it's a Southern thing. There is that yes? You know, the, 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 you know but the Democrats have, since they changed from being Dixiecrats, has always had the blacks. Uh, 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 helping them, helping the blacks. Democrat, the party itself. Lyndon Johnson, for Christ's sake, with the civil rights laws. I mean, that's why the blacks in the South, you know, went for Hillary. Come on. Yeah, and Bernie Sanders uh, marching, marching with uh, Martin Luther King and getting arrested for him. That, 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 of course, meant nothing. No, it didn't mean anything. And the point of it is that when you, uh, they did not notice the changes in Billy and, and Hillary. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. corporate ass-kissing changes well, which occurred. Well, not just in... Uh, since the 90s. When, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Well, not just the changes in the Clintons, but the changes in the party itself. As a whole, with the DNC and 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 oh, Deborah, well. Deborah Washerman Schultz, uh, you know, and the whole thing that happened from the beginning of the campaign, mm. 2016 campaign. You know, I mean, the whole uh, transformation uh, that I remember, not 2016. I I heard the term uh, maybe a two or three, uh, maybe a few years in the past about Blue Dog. I never heard the word blue dog Democrat before that. Mm -hmm. The blue dog Democrats. Yeah. Oh, you know when I first heard heard, heard it? Heard it? Heard it with uh, uh, Lieberman, Dodd, and um, who's the other guy? I know Senator Dodd. I know there were certain turncoats who voted right wing. I know Lieberman and Dodd. Well, Lieberman was a goddamn Manchurian candidate. Yeah, Dodd you know? was Dodd was uh, anti-universal, single-payer universal health care. I, I <laughs> but he was for Dodd and uh, Dodd Frank. You know, they were for uh, reigning in Wall Street, the Dodd Frank Act. Yeah. So they were kind of like moderate Democrats. You know? They were. They were. Corporatists in some ways, some ways of voting, and then they were uh, progressive in other ways. Yeah, well, yeah. Wow. well, 100% progressive is the only way. Hold on. To being 100% progressive is the only way you're going to truly help the poor and the middle class. Yeah. Not by being a moderate. Bingo. Is that what is that this is that what they mean by centrist? Yeah, the word a centrist, centrist is like moderate. saying I'm a moderate. Yeah. Okay. I vote the center, where I won't get hurt. By oh, your riding the fence. That's correct. You don't want to make waves. That's correct. In other words, you're 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 a fucking sycophant. That's correct. You're you're a political sycophant. Whoever's in charge, I will sycophant. Uh, 
It's like it's like when somebody a team where wins the World Series, all these all of a sudden you see local people buying the cap of the winner of the World Series. They go they get along wait, they go along to get along. People like to be uh, Followers. Know, associated with a winner. Oh you see yeah, all the, yeah, all the, uh, yeah. All the uh, politicians and stuff, they always like to be around a winner. Yeah, I'm yeah, not a Denver good, Bronco good. fan, but as Basketball, soon as uh, football, as soon as they won, uh, all these people, Denver, Denver, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I I rooted for Denver because I like Peyton Manning, and I knew he was retiring, and I wanted to see him get a, a one more Super Bowl ring. Uh, I like I like the Manning family, and um, you know, uh, I for him. I did it for him, not that I like Denver, but what I'm saying, you get the message, sycophants, they just, they go with the winner, they, they, they're like chameleons, they, they're like a politician, if he's in front of uh, working class people, he starts, he or she sounds progressive. If, they, if they're in front of uh, cor and corporate CEOs, they sound like a scumbag. Yeah, but they do it behind closed doors. Oh, like uh, Goldman Sachs speeches? Like Hillary. Like Goldman Sachs, Sachs yes. speeches? Because they can't do it out in public. It would ruin their image. You see. Yeah. yeah. That's what uh, that's what the late great Jack LaLanne says. I can't die, it'll ruin my image. Well, there he died. But he died in, yeah, he died of an uh, infection. Ah. Like a respiratory infection. I'm surprised. He used to take a truckload of pills. All right, go ahead. It is outrageous the way President Barack Obama, U.S. Senator Charles Schumer, Representative Nancy Pelosi, Pussy Pelosi, and the media are reacting to Donald Trump's election appointments and leadership. What about the gooseneck Elizabeth Warren, the fake Native American? I wasn't a supporter of Trump during the primaries, but once he became the nominee, he had my support. And, I must say, since he won the election, his work ethic, selection process, and leadership skill have impressed me greatly. I think he's only taken Christmas and Thanksgiving off since his election. And the quality of his appointments is unprecedented. He has attracted some of America's greatest achievers and leaders. His daily use of Twitter to bypass the media and to go directly to contact with the American people is highly effective. On the other hand, the behavior of Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and the media is disgusting. What do they think they are accomplishing by all their negativity? Here we go, negativity. They not only do not want to work with Trump, Toxic. they, they are actually you. trying to undermine his effectiveness. That's how Pollyannas are. Everything is toxic negativity. You're a hater. You're a hater. <laughs> if these leftists have their way, they will destroy the American way, as they have tried to do during the eight years of Obama. What well, makes you think the American way is, is the best way? I hope you will join me in supporting Trump as he becomes president of our great nation. There we go. This guy sounds like a flag waver. Let's give our full support in his pledge to make America great <laughs> again. Oh, oh, I wish I had whiskey in this tea. Right. Make America great again. A pledge. America. Okay, wait, uh, wait, you were Kate Smith singing God Bless America, right? I read the editorial with shock and dismay. You are explicitly crediting the president-elect's comment as the reason the attempt to gut ethics oversight into Congress failed. In fact, 
It was the torrent of news articles Monday evening and Tuesday morning that brought the uh, Republicans' attack on the office to the attention of the public, leading many to call, email, or write their representatives in protest. They had far more to do with it than Trump. I don't understand why you would avoid taking credit for your role in thwarting this disgusting bid to weaken ethical oversight. Donald Trump's tweets didn't oppose gutting the Office of Congressional Ethics. Instead, he criticized the timing of the proposal. Your editorial did a disservice to all the organizations and individuals who voiced objections on ethical and constitutional grounds. Yeah, from what I understand, Donald Trump spends a lot of time on Twitter. Yes, he does. More time on Twitter than he does preparing for the most important job in the world. Yeah. Da ba 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 into, into the wee hours of the night, too, from what I hear. Da, da, da. In about two weeks, a man who lost the national popular vote by more than 2.8 million votes will be inaugurated as the 45th president of the United States. Why? Because of an outdated system the country holds on to called the Electoral College. With more than 38 million citizens, gets 55 votes in the college. Wyoming, with 582,000 people, gets three votes. That gives the citizens of Wyoming an out-of-balance proportional advantage by about 358% per person. Ah. So much for one person, one vote. Yeah. I have a solution. Hillary Clinton won in California by more than 3.4 million votes. Oh, she did? Yes. Oh, she did. That's a fact. She won the popular vote. You look happy about that. It, I, I am happy about someone else winning <laughs> the popular vote over Trump. It didn't have to be Hillary, but it was. You must learn to accept facts as they are. Yeah, well, we have the, unfortunately, we, either way, we have the same crappy capitalism, uh, let's put it this way, we don't have, we don't have democratic socialism. You're forgetting one thing. Like Scandinavia You're has. forgetting one important what? thing. What? When you discuss right and left wing, the crumbs. The crumbs. The crumbs. Oh, you mean like my grandfather said. That is correct. A few crumbs is better than nothing. So they are not the same. They are not two sides of a coin. So, so if 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 we had the ideal, that's another matter. And the oligarch didn't interfere, and the American people were not suckers, then we would get a whole loaf of bread, a whole grain bread, mind you, like Scandinavians get, instead of a handful of crumbs. Because we have the votes to get anything we want. Oh, with the, in the we, Congress and the Senate. And the oh yeah, you mean we the people? Yeah, yes. we have the numbers. Yes. But this uh, electoral college shit—that's uh, a problem. That's too. a problem there. Yeah. Right. Continue. I have a solution. Hillary Clinton won in California by 3.4 million votes. She lost in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin by about 103,000 votes combined. Uh, My solution is for Democrats to relocate voters from California to Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, as needed in time to establish residency for the 2020 election. 
Is this a serious proposal? No. But it does illustrate the absurdity of the system we use to select a president of all Americans. That's right, right on. I want to salute. I want to salute my friend from uh, Facebook uh, of New England, uh, a great New Englander, uh, Mr. Dan Dudley. Mr. Dan Dudley, I salute you with my lucky Blackthorn Shillelagh, weapons grade. All right, shout out to Dan Dudley. We had a very invigorating chat last night. He's like, um, he's a truth seeker. Yay. He's not a right winger. He's not a, a neoliberal hipster jackass. He's a truth seeker like myself. Well, and he, tell, he, tell, and he tells it like it is. What? A truth seeker must abide by both sides. Well, you have to you have to determine what are what are the facts before you. Well, of course. You can't say, uh, like for instance, uh, some people well, no. are farther to the left than myself and Dan Dudley. Some people believe in giving special treatment to groups of people that are lobbying, and we don't. And that's that. You know, it's just there are differences. You don't have to kill each other over it, but, you know, just differences. I look at it this way. If I don't have equal opportunity to get benefits myself, I don't give a fuck about any lobbying group. Fuck them. If James P. Madonna is not filling up his his belly with the finest food and filling my freaking wallet up, I ain't giving, I ain't cutting no slack to any lobbying group. Fuck you. Go ahead. Well, that's only me. Well, the uh, our government is already skewed in that area. You mean skewed uh, and giving, tow tow giving and giving. Well, I'm and talking giving about to uh, all those who already have. I'm talking about lobbying. Uh, no, no. Of course, the rich don't deserve a red cent. I'm talking about lobbying groups they, that they we're special. We're special. We're more important than all those other people. We're, you know, like like let's say the gays are lobbying and the lesbians lobbying and then the. the I'm mi talking about the money. The minorities lobby. Who cares about those lobbies? I'm talking about where money goes. Oh, you're talking about uh, the money going to the top. Exactly. Like what Bernie Sanders says: the uh, dis disproportionate disproportioning of the uh, of the wealth. Correct. And in the Am taxes. In America. Right. And tax, tax system, yes. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, it's like with the jobs. I mean, uh, okay, you're outsourcing all the jobs and um, the company, the corporation is not paying taxes and then they bring the products back from China and they don't pay tariff on it. So they're getting off scot-free. Okay. Now, they're they're super super wealthy and successful, and now they got a, a they got poor poor America, poor downtrodden America without a pot to piss in, and they expect them to buy their products. Interesting how that works. Be on their side. They don't they don't have that long term an analytical view of, of reality. Because have they are issuing personality, personal stuff. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. When you're dealing with money, you cannot deal with personal uh, uh, likes and dislikes. You follow the money trail. Right. And, and where it leads, yeah. you open your big flapping mouth, you know. And if, you, if your business is to manufacture a product, you need customers. Exactly. You gotta have people to buy them. Yeah. Now, if people don't have surplus cash anymore, because the middle class is shrinking, and the poor is growing, and the poor have no surplus cash, then guess what? Uh, all, all the all the things that people really don't need, all the luxury items, 
like fine jewelry and uh, uh, a picnic table in the backyard or whatever, or umbrella, picnic umbrellas, blah, 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 blah. all those industries stop, stop selling. And it, it goes down to the like, it, it goes all the way down to bare necessities like food, uh, a home the heating, things like that, shelter. I hated that song. Uh, How disturbing! Clothes on the back, roof over the head, food on the table. To read an editorial that maintains a one-to-one -one cause and effect relationship that has zero proof. This particular oddly tempered tweet came toward the end of an unsavory attempt by House Republicans uh, to gut the independent ethics watchdog panel. Oh. At the point of President-elect Donald Trump's tweet, it had already become clear that many people had spoken up against putting ethics on a back burner. There was no mention of this in the editorial. While this may seem like a small point to some, it's my strongly held belief that our free press must never be intimidated or be reluctant to tell the whole story in this age of demonizing journalists and First Amendment rights. While tweets are ostensibly part of that right, a president of the United States must never be allowed to feel that it, that it, huh? that what? it, it uh, excuse me, to feel that it is a substitute, there's no it there, for responsible questioning and responses at news conferences. Yeah. This is no time for major media outlets to turn the other cheek. The entire story must always be told no matter where it leads or what it arouses in the American people. Well, I guess the tweet is the modern version of the fireside chat. Yes, <laughs> but they are saying that it was Donald Trump's tweet yeah. who made the Republicans back off, and it wasn't. It was the people, okay, who saw what was going on. They wanted to kill the ethics panel so they could do whatever they wanted to do. And this because is, they're crooks. And this is why I'm grateful to people like Bernie Sanders and, and uh, Chuck Schumer who are um, have the blowhorn, have the loudspeaker to reinforce uh, um, public... Yeah. Uh, What's the word? Dis disapproval. Discord. 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 Yeah, yeah there, you, there you go. When I was younger, my little brother was annoying. They always are. My mother always used to say, ignore him. She had the right idea. What about a nice five knuckle shuffle right across the chops? Is there really nothing else to write or talk about other than Donald Trump's very obvious need for attention? Well, that's how he is. He, you know, he's coddled. Are we really interested in seeing his picture every time we turn on the computer? Well, people like his hair and, and his pouty uh, lips. I am certainly. I like Ivanka's pouty lips. Not though. interested in what he posts on Twitter. There is something else to be taken into account. A friend who belonged to Toastmasters told me that sometimes you need to look at a problem from a different angle. Toastmaster, huh? I like my toast a little bit dark. Not burnt, but a little dark. The new president will have many challenges. It is possible that his approach may yield some results. Yeah. He needs a chance to prove himself. You don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. All right, Chief, so what do you think? Break time? Break time. Okay, you will now...
We will now go to promo by our um, announcer, uh, William uh, H. Morrow III, and you will see the debut of our uncensored, hard-hitting truth administrator, Miss uh, the uh, uh, sensible sage Sash Boyle, Boy. his debut video, and you also see some very comical south of the border Donald Trump wall cartoons. Oh, what they do? Yeah, very comical. Oh. They're comical, I said. And we'll be back for the balance of our show. And to those that, to, to the person that complained that James P. Madonna got up from his chair, go fuck yourself. How you like them apples? You like apples? How you like them apples? Okay, 2016, year in review. Here we go. Uncensored, hard dating truth, coming at you. Well, the water in Flint is still dirty. Has been since 2014. Money Ranch, nothing happened. One guy died of a heart attack. Dakota Access Pipeline, well, yeah, a few more things happened. Dogs, water hoses. Police shootings, killing people for just being sassy, smelling like weed, being black. Corruptions at a minimum. Sterling, Garner, Castile, list goes on. And then in Dallas, people start shooting back, and all of a sudden the cops take notice. Hmm, maybe we shouldn't just murder people wholesale. Gorillas shot. Psychopaths love animals. Orlando, 50 people dead in a nightclub shooting. Turns out a gay guy didn't like other gay guys. Very sad. Very sad. There's a kid that got accused of building a bomb, just put a bunch of crap in a Suitcase, just because he wanted Obama to recognize him. He did. We lost a lot of icons. Ali, Prince, Glenn Fry, Gary Shandling, Carrie Fisher. The list goes on. Of course, Scalia's dead. Uh, DNC convention. Neoliberals decided to split the party. Subvert the, the uh, progressives. And um, alienate them. Gaslight them. Uh, as a, and because they did not integrate the progressives, the DNC lost. So there you go. Um, they sold the nomination, yet they still whine about the Russians. I mean, there was shenanigans going on in New York, Iowa, Philadelphia, California. People are sheep. Bah, Hillary. Bah, Hillary. Bah. Everyone's against Hillary. She she's did everything perfectly. Fidel Castro died. It's kind of a gray area. WikiLeaks. You know, the DNC never refuted the veracity of the WikiLeaks. They just blamed other people, like the Russians. Seems to be an ongoing theme. Brexit, austerity, riots in France. It's going on all over the world, not just here in the U.S. And conservative people like Trump are getting hired and elected into those offices. Yep. France, England, here, Italy. 
And we here on the left are left, left with the most hated candidate to run against the most hated candidate. Boy, that was an election for the ages, let me tell you. We need more truth now more than ever. The mainstream media is coming after what they call fake news, even though they're the corporate-owned news, and they're about as controlled as the message you get, which is pretty much fake and Propaganda 101. I would just say that the winners this year are the Dakota Access Pipeline protesters. Those guys stood their ground, and they used the alternative media, and uh, the mainstream media finally took notice when the veterans showed up. So the fight goes on there, but power to the people. They won. Protest does have an effect. The fight goes on. This should inspire us. And uh, we should all want the truth, and we should all want to take care of each other. You know, Denmark, Finland, Scandinavia, um, Ontario now, they're all working on basic income and helping the human race progress by eliminating things like homelessness, poverty, and um, trying to create a more perfect union, which is what we should be doing here, not not uh, creating a more perfect uh, cesspool for 1% to take over. All right. Sash Boyle from California. I am done here, and uh, Happy New Year. If you like this one, let James know, and we'll get you some more uncensored, hard-hitting truth. Peace. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has 
The God Project, and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like newsletter censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Hi, I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the Newsletter Censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we are back. Thank you very much. Sensational, sensible sage, Sash, Boyle, and William H. Morrow III for doing promo. Oh, we are back. Okay, now we will continue with the balance of this week's progressive discussion show. Can you dig that, brother? Hold on. Gotta have the lucky seven bells. Carry on. New research suggests the way to stop a lifelong peanut allergy. They could be dangerous. Is to feed your baby peanut foods. Yeah, but you want to take that chance. Well, we don't know if, we, if he's allergic to it the first time out of the box. Oh, is that like like uh, the influenza vaccine having a dead influenza virus in it? Uh, a homeopath homeopathic preparations have have something the same. that causes the um, symptoms. All right. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, part of the federal government's National Institutes of Health, issued new guidelines. So they get rid of it. To health care providers and parents. They say peanut allergies can be stopped by introducing children to foods that contain the legumes as young as early infancy. You hear that, people? They're legumes. They're not nuts. The new rules follow scientific research that showed introducing foods with peanuts during infancy can prevent allergies. The NIAID said peanut allergies are a growing health problem with no treatment or cure. It usually develops in childhood and remains into adulthood. In a 2010 survey, about 2% of 
of U.S. children had a peanut allergy, which was more than four times the estimate in 1999. The decision to rework the guidelines came after a trial of more than 600 infants found that a regular peanut consumption until age five reduced the likelihood of an allergy by 81%. Dr. Anthony Fauci, NIAID's director, said people operated under the incorrect assumption that they should forbid their children from eating peanuts because they may be an allergy risk. As it turns out, counterintuitively, that works against the child. Fauci said the new guidelines will save lives and lower health care costs. We expect that widespread implementation of these guidelines by healthcare providers will prevent yeah. the development of peanut allergy mm -hmm. in many susceptible children and reduce the prevalence of peanut allergy in the United States. The new guidelines are being embraced by the American Academy, Academy of Pediatrics, which put out recommendations 17 years ago that some families should avoid feeding children peanuts until they turn age three. Maybe the same thing could be done with uh, an allergy to bee stings by giving a child apis, homeopathic apis. Dr. Scott Asher, Professor of Pediatrics at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City, <sighs> represented AAP on the guidelines and helped write them. He said the three-year-old rule was dropped in 2008 and was replaced by the guidance that feeding children peanut products early is okay. He encourages people to forget the old recommendation and follow the new guidelines. He asks parents to consult a doctor when picking a peanut food to feed their children and to be aware of choking. The guidelines are based on whether a child has eczema or an egg allergy. Good indicators of peanut allergies. Really? I wonder if that's eczema. Well, eczema is not spelled E-G-G-S. I don't want people to get an idea that there's a connection to an egg allergy and ate some up. It's not spelled that way. Good indicators of peanut allergies are eczema and egg allergy. It's just coincidental that it has to be that way, yeah. Fauci suggests parents check with their doctor before moving forward with peanut food. Just like the chicken pox virus is related to uh, herpes zoster, which is the shingles. I want to send a shout out to uh, personal trainer extraordinaire in the, uh, in the up here in the Northeast, Mr. Mario Petrus of uh, Petrus Fit. Check out his Facebook page, Petrus Fit. Mario Petrus. <coughs> the creator himself, the creator, Mario Petrus. Okay. Continue. The letter writer proclaims that the white 
working class voted against itself in the last election. Sure did. Because it is ill-informed. Ill-informed? We have access to information from all sources. No, they're just numbskulls. Suggesting that a vote for Hillary Clinton would have provided them with federal entitlements of greater value and the federal taxes they would pay on their increased productivity occasioned by more better paying work in an expanding economy. Yeah, sure, better paying work. Yeah. On the What's, contrary, yeah. <laughs> your readers should be thankful for the ill-informed white working class whose increased productivity is necessary to pay for the government benefits the informed believe they are entitled to. What about what the rich think they are entitled to and what they get and uh, what they don't pay for? I hope that's what they he, he meant. There is considerable anxiety regarding the January 20 inauguration of Donald Trump. Say the least. One thing is evident. <laughs> Trump and his soon-to-be administration have incorporated their version of George Orwell's news speak in how they address the American public. Newspeak. Sounds like a helicopter. Which is a concept coined by George Orwell in his novel, 1984. Refers to a language used by those in power that is designed to confuse the public's understanding of government policies and actions and to diminish the range of their thought. Therefore, it is incumbent upon the press to remain vigilant and to fulfill its essential role of imparting news and commentary of interest to keep the public informed. Well, keeping the public informed from the mainstream American media is not the way to go. <laughs> and um, news on the internet is becoming more and more tricky and controversial. So. Uh, there's only a small handful of uh, sources I respect. I'm talking about like true progressives. I like Democracy Now. I like uh, Bernie Sanders' page, Jill Stein's page. You know, not many. Uh, Ed Schultz has a good page, but uh, it's not that many. Your credo, <clears throat> in my view, lacks integrity. In my opinion, your paper favors one party more than the other. You constantly lambast and ridicule Republicans and conservatives, but he prays and filter non-favorable information on Democrats and liberals. It is kind of disheartening, I think, that our press has lowered its journalistic standards so much. I am still holding out hope that you realize that you have a fiduciary responsibility to report the news and not manufacture it to suit your needs. 
or I can. Oh, really? So, if the newspaper um, criticizes Republicans, conservatives, then this person considers that uh, bashing, lambasting. One side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, you hit a raw nerve with somebody. You're picking on them. You're a hater. You're negative. <laughs> because you're telling them something they do not want to hear. <laughs> or they might not even be aware of it. Well, because of their um, uh, allegiance to their party. And I bet these, these, uh, I bet these uh, uh, knuckleheads uh, believe in trickle-down economics, which doesn't exist. It can exist, but they don't let it exist. But I bet these knuckleheads... Why would you let it, it exist? You know, we had this argument how many times? Well, if it trickles, you have to, the CEO has to arrange it to trickle. But it's got to go to the CEO first. Of course. No, not of course. You know, you... you it goes to you, the lower you're make, you're first. Listen, you jabroni, you're making this up just to antagonize me. Because you're not getting I'm the point. talking logic. You're talking the same logic that exists The money right calls, now. who decides if the money's going to trickle down or not? Where the money's who? coming from. Who? The grand poobah comes down Where from the universe? Where the money's coming from. In a company, in a corporation. In anything. Comes from the top. Yeah. But if the money you want to distribute down... But you have to allow it. ...to trickle down, why do you want to give it to the guy on the top first? Well, he, he usually collects the profits from the products being sold. Is but the, he never trickles it down. That's why I said he's not allowing it to trickle. Because there's no such thing as trickle down. No, there's not. Well, then why do you want it to go Because it pulls at the top, and the CEO decides to share the prosperity of that's the corporation a, with the employees. That's a decision he made. He decides it. That's correct. Which he doesn't do. But government does not work like that. And the money comes from government, not from the CEO. The guy who, the guy who owns Papa John's Pipa, Pipa, Pizza made a statement, we are not obligated to share the prosperity of our company with our employees. We all know So that, that debunks trickle-down economics right there. But that's not the point I'm arguing. That's not the point. You just you make up the arguing, point just to bust my balls. You are arguing as things are right now. All the benefits go to the top. Yeah, they pull up. I up. want to change that. Well, then why have a CEO then? <laughs> What the, what's the difference? That CEO is not government. He's not making government decisions of where the money's going to go. Oh, so what you're saying... To buy a... a, 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 a okay. A, a, what's, the, what's the 35 so, that uh, airplane? Okay, so what well, you're... I want to buy one. I want to buy a so, golf cart. So what you're saying is, if it's a company, let's say, that makes office equipment like staple guns, staplers, you want the employees to get a percentage of the no. sale of those staples? No. Staplers? I don't know how you can understand it because you're missing. Are you the knucklehead that told me that cops sh shouldn't have guns like the Bobbies in London, England, or was it somebody else? You're changing the subject. I'm talking this about ultra liberal ideas that don't that don't work. Trickle down doesn't work because it's never been done. I just said that. No, you didn't. You want to continue it. In the guise that well, it does... Well, you, well, you're saying it can't be done, right? I said I don't want it ever to be done. Well, how do you... Then how does an employee um, prosper... Forget the employee... This is the argument we've already had. How does an employee prosper with the company? You are putting a factory. How does an employee prosper with you the company? You are putting a factory in place of the government. The government makes these decisions with money. All right, so you're not a factory. So you're talking about more or less uh, democratic socialism. Correct. More or less. No, not more or less. More. Well, that would have happened if. Uh, if we would have had an administration with people like Sanders and Stein and Ralph Nader, it and, might have or, all, or, uh, it might have also, or happened. Dennis Kucinich too.
if people like yourself what happened to him by the way yeah that don't misunderstand why you gotta continue giving to the guy upstairs hey look for at you all to the, benefit look at all that the, ain't the way it is look at all the or major should be. look at all the major charities why do they have to have a CEO it's a fundraiser forget the CEO he has nothing the government gets the the, the the Federal Reserve prints the goddamn money from the government why don't you just say uh, 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 having corporations uh, uh, that privately own corporations with shareholders and a CEO is a bad idea. It sucks. It doesn't work. Let's, you know, that's it. Kaput. It's capitalism. Right. Well. Well, I never said I was a fan of capitalism. Well, it sounds like it when you want to continue it. What the hell do you think trickle down is? Well, it would be nice to share the prosperity of a company with your employees. The company is different from government. You can do anything you want as a CEO of your stinking company. That's why I they, couldn't give a shit what so, you do. So that's why they get away with all the shenanigans they get away with. CEOs, presidents. Forget the CEOs. Forget the benefits well, well, how do going we, to those on the top. Well, that's why they get away with the shenanigans that they get away with. Because they can. Well, they seem to get away with it, but, but people like you wanting them to do it and continue it. I want it stopped. Well, I'm talking about the. Um, I know what you're talking I'm about. I'm talking about the teabaggers that some of them don't have a pot to piss in that for some reason believe in this flag waving capitalist American way. I'm talking about them. They are. They You're are talking part of about money going to some jerk on the top, and then hoping he will share it with those idiots on the bottom. Hey, the same thing goes. I'm not talking about that. The same thing goes for uh, TV evangelists like Joel Osteen. There's no. I don't see the poor and the homeless being helped by him. He's he's pulling. He's taking donations and helping himself and his family. You know, so he's like a corporate CEO also. It's part of the he system. He is a corporate CEO. Religion is a business. I'm talking about government. Well, not originally religion is a Originally. Business. It was always a business. Oh, oh, so you're not... All the time. So you're not in favor of Christianity. Tithing was given to help them evangelize or do what they want to do. Right. Well... So it's always been there. Right. So then why are you the Reverend Doc? Why are you... Why do you have the God Project if you feel religion has always been a business? Because it ain't my business. Is it in the Bible is, that there's a business there? Tithing is a business. Tithing is a business. You're taking in money and you're, uh, you're, you're uh, uh, using the money right. to continue your business. Now you're well, now. What the hell do you call that? Now the concept of tithing can be corrupted. It is corrupted in the sense of Joel Olstein well, when yeah. it's going to his Cadillac or his mansion and not to the people again. Well, socialism can be. It has been corrupted also by the Soviet Union, by uh, Lenin, Stalin, whatever. Yeah. So. You know. So. But what does that have to do with trickle down? You're way off the subject. No, you you have this uh, raw nerve about the words trickle down. Because I know what it is, and you don't seem to know what it is. You seem no, to... No, you, 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 you want to make... You're like Billy Morrow. You want to make it sound like you know it all, and James don't. That's what it is. I if know what you, it is. If you don't understand a concept, it is no shame to admit you don't understand something. I know what trickle means. What does it mean? I know what down means. And where is it coming from? From the top. Who's at the top in your concept? Well, when it comes to companies, a president or a CEO. Yeah, and when it comes to the government. And the board of directors. The Who's government? at the top? Well, the assholes that are in Congress, the Senate, the president. See? The top. People. We... The people. Well, we're supposed to be there. No, the not supposed to be. We're supposed to well, be. We're not there now. And why is that? Brainwashing. We haven't accepted our charge. 
No, we've been That's brainwashed. Why. We've been intimidated. To be whatever. Told. We're brainwashing. It's the same thing. There is no whatever. There's a logical reason for everything. The history books you had in school and that I had in school were horseshit. And everyone else had. Including the teabaggers. Well, I didn't have just one book. See? That's the difference. Well, every, every, every grade I had, uh, where they issued a, no, 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 another no. book. No, 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 no. No, about. I didn't get a history book? No, I didn't say that. Now you're a soothsayer. I go to the library and enhance my reading. Yeah, try to get America's youth to spend a lot of time at the library. Whatever. Oh, oh, oh. But I did, and that's me. Right. Me, me, right. me. Right. I was not America's youth. Okay? Okay. Continue. But the point is, trickle down Instead is of not a my good fucking thing. Balls, continue with the show. All right? All right. Understand that. Yeah, right. Or it continues. Because you have a, re a reverence for the CEO, which I'm trying to deflate. Well, if somebody if somebody has a job, usually they have uh, supervisors, and yeah, you know, and it goes up, 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 up. But that's a different thing. Like a pyramid Where scheme. the money comes from. Like a pyramid. Okay. Different entirely from where the money comes from, which I'm interested in, not the person. Well, he is to me. Well, the whether he's my boss or whatever. Well, the employees through blood, sweat, and tears produce the profits for the company. So why give it to the CEO? Because it's set up. Ah! That way. Oh, he's finally getting around to it, folks. That's the setup. Well, somebody. I want to do away with it. Well, somebody has to make managerial decisions for a company. Not my money. Do you make not you, my money? Do you make managerial decisions for your newsletter? Is, course, it the CEO's, is it the CEO's money first or my money first? Who produces the wealth the people, for the company? The people who actually produce it. Then it's my money first. Why would I want it going upstairs and then trickling down to me? Grab the concept, man. The because, concept is because garbage. It, because supposedly, I think the stockholders own the corporation, right? Own, as far as owning it. But they don't. But they don't. But that's an investment. They're investors. Yeah. Un unfortunately, they're being kowtowed to a little too much. Well, we're not, again, talking about a factory or a company. I'm talking about the United States government and where it puts its money. Yeah. Okay? And they have made decisions, at least from the 70s, to provide all benefits to those who already have. Trickle down. See it? I am a straight man who met and fell in love with a transgender girl. Okay. I will call Eve. I fell in love, besides. We dated for almost three years. And they were the happiest of my life. In all that time, we never once had an argument. She said I had given her the strength to come out to her family and begin her transition. I was planning to ask her to marry. Oh God, it's going that far? Without any indication that anything was wrong, she dumped me one day, and weeks later began dating her friend, another transgender girl. Oh, two trans two transgenders as a couple. So it's not. You can't call them lesbians. You can't call... I don't know what to call them. I wanted Let, to walk... Lessie gays? I Gay wanted lessons. to walk away and take time to heal. But Eve maintained that I was important to her. And we could remain friends. Yeah, usually the feminine 
wants the significant other to be the masculine. But in that case, it was like two femmes. For the next few months, we tried. But her new girlfriend treated me like I was a threat. Well. While I was emotionally hurting, she seemed to take intense pleasure in showing me how happy they were together. Mm. Well, that's pettiness. That's pettiness. It eventually led to friction. Friction. And now my ex thinks I caused it. Maybe the ex was never meant to be. Because I was jealous. For him. Well, then he should just let it go. So she cut off all contact with me. Like I said, the, the love was not... I stood by her when she absolutely needed my support. But when the time came to give a little back, I was abandoned. Hey, what did Captain Kirk say to Charlie? You know, uh, the other the girl has to feel it too. It's not just you. You know what I mean? It's a way street. You're a Star Trek fan. I will never trust anyone again. And I don't know how to get back myself. It's very difficult to trust nowadays. Can you help? You're able. It might help if you consider that there are more than physical changes when making the kind of transition Eve was undergoing. She may have felt that her trans friend was better able to relate to what she was experiencing than you were. That's why good looking, uh, good looking chicks uh, have, uh, some of them have gay friends because they, they talk girl talk with them. They can relate to them. It was cowardly of her to just dump you than to tell you she had doubts about your relationship. And it was selfish of her to pressure you to hang around as just a friend after. It also was not realistic. What you are feeling is normal. How well? It might help you to move forward. If you keep in mind that all women are not the same. That building trust takes time. And give yourself time to heal before re replacing Eve. I've had people look me straight in the eye and lie to me, so that, that gives you an example how tough it is to trust nowadays. Not only nowadays, it's always been. Yeah. Some people could do that. They could look and how you how many people they could look you in eye in the eye and lie. You know? How I'm many not, uh, and not flinch. How many Indians could uh, the low range of trust? Only Tato! Well back back then the the Native American was always demonized. They were called savages. They were of course, the uh, the white settlers and the pioneers were all innocent. You know, they didn't do anything wrong as they stole the land from Native Americans. You know, it's, that's how it was. So, President elect Donald Trump yeah. says that no computer is safe. Yeah. When it comes to keeping information private. Expressing new skepticism about the security of online communications, his administration is likely to use for everything from day-to-day -day planning to international relations. Trump rarely uses email or computers, despite his frequent tweeting. Really? You know, 
If you have something really important, write it out. Well, tweeting is a modern way of writing it out. You're and have it delivered by courier. You want to spend the money? It's cheaper to tweet. The old-fashioned way. Maybe the cheap fashion way is to just tweet every time you want to say something. It, get, it gets around. Trump told reports. I like to hit your your furnace with my shillelagh. Hey, and what? then there will be no heat. Why does it sound like a fucking helicopter? It's pissing because me there's off. something in the blower. Oh, okay. That don't belong there. Ah. Well, then you got enough. You got knuckle. A particle. You got knuckle. Something. You got knuckle-headed. Uh, Knuckle-headed maintenance people that are, that are coming here. The maintenance person could do nothing. Is he uh, one of them the affirmative is, action people? The blower is encased. In a case. Ah, uh, so the problem is not you to... can't get into it. It's like, but yeah, I got you now. You'd have to put a whole new blower in. Ah, uh, uh, Anyway. Because I'll tell you what. We digressed. No computer is safe. No computer is safe. Trump has repeatedly cast aside allegations by U.S. intelligence agencies that Russia tried to influence the presidential election through hacking. Barack Obama ordered sanctions on Russia spy agencies last week. Closed two Russian compounds. Expel 35 diplomats. The U.S. said we're really spies. So they pulled a uh, like an FDR uh, routine with the uh, Japanese Americans. They're, they they pulled something a little bit similar, not quite as harsh, but the Russians have gone back to Russia. They've yeah. been kicked out of the United States yeah. of America. Well, you say it with. Like, like, like you believe all oh, Russia ruined Hillary Clinton's campaign. Oh, I'm shedding a tear. Oh. You don't think the Russians did? I or, no, let's forget about the Russians. I think I think ah. I think that Donald Trump is 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 a let's forget. Is, is the l slightly lesser of the two evils compared to Hillary Clinton. That's that's my take on it. But that's your personal opinion. Right. Thank you. But we're not talking about that. Right. We're talking about, let's forget about Russia for a minute. Did someone besides Comey want to give bad information about Hillary Clinton? Bad information. Bad information. Aside from whether it was true or false. Bad information. You mean motives? Yeah. Well, there's a motive behind it, obviously. Well, of course Donald no Trump or Donald Trump or, or relished in in any bad information uh, uh, coming out uh, about uh -huh. Hillary Clinton. Uh, when Bernie was in the primaries, his supporters relished also in bad information about Hillary Clinton. Uh-huh. Uh, but... Uh, you know, uh, hey, DNC did their dirty deeds, and somebody did the, the dirty deeds uh, with the uh, the final election. So there was an agenda. There was an agenda was to hurt the Hillary Clinton campaign in some way, yeah. shape, or form. Now, I, I find the uh, the dealings between Vladimir Putin and uh, I believe it's ExxonMobil to, to be suspicious. It's not suspicious. They have business dealings. The Arctic Circle. There's this <laughs> oil uh, near the Arctic Circle. Whatever it is, they have business dealings and that is why Trump has to do with likes oil. Mr. Putin. It has to do with oil. In other okay. words, Trump, Trump is always looking for the next buck. That is correct. Even though he's a multi-billionaire, a multi-multi-billionaire. Trump's whole cabinet is all about making money for the big boys and girls. So if you're a multi-billionaire, apparently something happens in your brain and you, uh, you're just not satisfied. That's the way it seems to me. You know, 
whatever. But the point, the point is, yeah. somebody had an agenda. See if she wants to run. You know, if I let her out now, you know that somebody's no. going to come over and say, the no. mamba wants to come back in. The mamba wants to come back in. By that time, we'll, we'll be banged oh, up. Oh, okay. All right. We'll be banged oh, up. Oh, yeah. There's agendas. There, There's agendas. Right. You know, if you want to use Sherlock Holmes' deductive reasoning. Um, there are. Go ahead. Go ahead. There are agendas. Obviously, uh, uh, agendas of greed, agendas of big business. Right. Um, and this particular agenda was to hurt the campaign. Yeah. Okay. Right. Trump plans to meet with intelligence officials in coming days to learn more about the allegations. He said he wants U.S. officials to be sure because it's a pretty serious charge. He pointed to intelligence failures on the existence of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq before the U.S. invasion and declared himself an expert in the area. I know a lot about hacking, he said. He don't use computers, but he knows a lot about hacking. How the hell does he... Yeah, sure he does. Uh -huh. Yeah. And hacking is a very hard thing to prove. <laughs> an expert. Huh? So it could be somebody else. He added cryptically that he also knows things that other people don't know. Hey. And so they cannot be sure of the situation. There are people who are trained in hacking, uh, just like there are people who are trained in internet security who, who you know, and, and there are people who just know programmers, uh, probably originally programmers that learn how to hack, uh, usually in other countries. Um, I know in, in third world countries, like I know for a fact that uh, <laughs> computer wizards in uh, Colombia, South America mm -hmm. even learn how to hack. And uh, so the world though, the world learns how to hack. If you got yeah. the foundation in uh, computers, uh, hey, before before the word hacking uh -huh. became a common word, um, we used to hear about people that get off creating viruses and trojans and you know what I mean. Usually, probably little a little scrawny little ugly geeks that that don't have any manhood. So they, uh, this replaces uh, their lack of manhood too. Create a virus to screw up a big organization and and make trouble, you know. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You know. Go ahead. Are we too late or we have time? Oh, I don't know. What time is it? Is it that time? Uh, two minutes after four. Oh. That clock more. is a little fast. One more. One more. Uh -huh. Yeah, one more for the road. One more. Congressional Republicans are planning a massive overhaul of the nation's tax system next year. Oh, the rich are going to get more. They're going to get more of a tax break. Yeah, I can guarantee you that. A heavy political lift that could ultimately affect families of every income level and businesses of every size. Well, if you're going to strangle the middle class, you're going to strangle small businesses because that is the middle class. Their goal is to simplify a complicated tax code. They want the flat tax, I bet. That rewards wealthy people with smart accountants, as well as corporations that can easily shift profits and jobs overseas. See, it, it won't be easy. It, see, that's that's what the flat tax is. It it it, it allows um, companies to pay even less taxes. It it just is. Yeah. It happens. It works that way. The last time it was done was 30 years ago. Ronald Reagan. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. And okay. Speaker Paul Ryan. Two, two pieces of shit. Have vowed to pass a tax package that will not add to the budget. The Washington term is revenue neutral. Yeah. 
Yeah, what about the revenue going into the military? That's over 50% of the budget, right? 57. 57% of the total U.S. budget. It means that for every tax cut, there has to be a tax increase. Oh, sure, the middle class. Strangle them. Make them poor. Creating winners and losers. Oh, yeah, the, the top 1%. Or 20% become the winners and everyone else below that become the losers. Lawmakers would get some leeway if non-partisan congressional analysts projected a tax cut would increase economic growth, raising revenue without increasing taxes. Nevertheless, passing the package will require some tough votes. Some key Republican senators want to share the political risk with Democrats. They argue that a tax overhaul must be bipartisan to be fully embraced by the public. I don't see anything wrong at all with taxing the rich. They don't like it, fuck them. I see a big problem with taxing the middle class. When our tax system was never set up to tax anything but the rich. The rich? Yeah. Well, it's a progressive tax system, like you said thousands of times. Thousands of times, but it's also been corrupted over the years with deductions and etc. 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 Corrupted. Hey, if you look, just like if you look in a dictionary and you read the definition of liberal and socialism and, you know, and so on and so on, communism, they're not negative at all. They actually sound very positive, but they were corrupted. And uh, who, what corrupts nice things? People that are corrupt themselves. So the, the problem goes back to the human nature. They cite... President Barack Obama's health law, which passed in 2010 without any Republican votes, has a major policy initiative that remains divisive. Congressional Democrats say they are eager to have a say, but McConnell, who faulted Democrats for acting unilaterally on health care is laying the groundwork to pass a purely partisan bill. McConnell said he wants the Senate to tackle a tax plan in the spring after Congress repeals Obama's health law. Well, you know that these these scumbag CEOs are probably pushing the Republican Congress for this because they are the culprits. They are the ones that offer the bribes and then send the lobbyists. So this is my deep hatred for the CEO. The above Republican all, above all. The party is always seeking tax cuts for the rich. Because they're, it's their, that's the, the agenda of their puppet masters. House Republicans are more eager to get started, but haven't yet set a timeline. Some things to know about the Republican efforts to overhaul the tax code. The House Republicans have released the outline of a tax plan that would lower <coughs> the individual income tax rate from 39.6% to 33% and reduce the number of brackets from 7 to 3. The gist of the plan is to lower tax rates for everyone and make up the lost revenue by scaling back exemptions, deductions, and credits. The plan retain some of the most popular tax breaks, including those for paying off a mortgage. 
school into college, making charitable contributions and having children. The standard deduction would be increased, giving taxpayers less incentive to itemize their deductions. The nonpartisan tax policy center says the plan would reduce revenues by three trillion dollars over the first decade, with most of the savings going to the highest income households. Hey Amen. You people voted for it. You reelected these incumbents. You know, Bill, Billy Morrow got so mad when I said he was mentioning how philanthropical people like Bill Gates is. I says, yeah, it's a tax write-off for these people. They, it's not from the goodness of their heart. He got so mad and says, oh, you, you, you and Reverend Bill, you got to be so negative about it. You can't look at look at at the positiveness of 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 uh, rich people donating to charity. I says, well, I'm being honest. I mean, the, there's a reason why they're donating so much. Senate Republicans have yet to coalesce around a comprehensive plan or even an outline. President-elect Donald Trump's plan has fewer details. He promises the tax cut for every income level, with more low-income families paying no income tax at all. The Tax Policy Center says Trump's plan would reduce revenue. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.